please join me in welcoming Jesse to our TEDx Bay Area stage. Jesse? So growing up, there were two rules in my household. One, to say yes to every new opportunity. And two, to be nice to everyone. So I grew up saying yes and being nice and saying yes and being nice. And then a couple of years ago, I found myself in a recurring predicament. A friend of mine invited me to a dinner party. She said, hey Jess, can you come to this dinner party next Wednesday? Um, I really want you to meet this great entrepreneur. It's gonna be really fun. And I said, yes, Lindsay, I can come to this dinner party. I'm so excited, how are you by the way? So there I was saying yes and being nice. All the while, I knew that I had another event on that same day, at that same time, in a different city. How could I have possibly <laughs> gone to the dinner party? Why did I say yes to this? And I know I'm not the only girl who's done this. Have some of you guys done this before where you say yes when you can't do it and then you have to RSVP late and it's like this whole big thing? So I realized this was a problem and after much pondering, I decided nobody ever taught me how to say no. So I run a talk show. And um, for my talk show, I get to interview incredible world leaders, business leaders. And I had the opportunity and honor to interview Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. In order to do this, I had to go to her house in Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, do the interview there. So I arrived with my crew at her door, and um, she, she greeted me at the door, and she welcomed me in. And this was a huge hero of mine. I think I did a report on her in fifth grade, and I was like obsessed with her. She broke down so many boundaries for women, and she's just incredible. So I'm standing there so excited to be her new best friend, because this is Sandra Day O'Connor. And she has this gorgeous white hair, and she's so sweet, and she invites me in, and she says, Jesse, would you like some coffee? And I'm like, no, Sandra Day O'Connor, I don't need any coffee, it's okay. But we're best friends. Um, and uh, everything was going well until I asked to go to the bathroom. So I said, Sandra, would you mind if I used your restroom? And she said, go ahead. It's down the hall and to the left. I was presented with two hallways. I began walking down what I thought was the correct hallway. About three steps in, I heard, no, down the hall and to the left. And I froze in my tracks. I was like, I went the wrong way. And so I backtracked, went down the proper hallway, did my business, and then came back, a little shook up from this bathroom incident. And she sat me down and she said, Jesse, what are you going to ask me today? And the crew was still setting up. And I said, well, one of the things, you know, I looked at all my research and my topics and my notes and my questions. I said, one of the things you might think about beforehand is I'd really love for you to share some of the most memorable court cases that you have, um, you know, been involved with. And she said, no, what else you got? So I looked at my questions and I said, okay, well, I was, no. Okay, okay, great. So she proceeded to tell me no to every single topic and question I had planned on asking her. Now on my show, I run a fun business talk show and I have, I've gotten good at you know, getting people to play along and have a little fun with me. I've, sang, I've sung songs with Ted Turner. I have rapped with MC Hammer. I've duct taped Mark Cuban to a chair and I could not get Sandra Day O'Connor to answer one of my questions. So I left there with two things that day. One, a great interview of which I improvised the entire thing. And two, a greater understanding of the power of no. Sandra Day O'Connor understands the power of no. When she says no, she means no. And people listen. Sandra Day O'Connor has the strength of conviction. There was one time I did say no. Um, about five years ago, I graduated from UCLA. Any Bruins in the house? Woo! Um, 
And it was the best day of my life. I had just landed actually a role on a hit Nickelodeon show. I celebrated with my family. They were there, they watched me walk. Um, my friends and I, um, you know, had a party that evening. Like, it was the best day of my life. I felt like I was gonna take over the world. And I went to bed feeling incredibly lucky and content and like I had just, it was the highest high I've ever experienced in my life. I went to sleep and about 5 a.m. I opened my eyes. There was a man in my room. I didn't know him. He was a stranger to me. I said, who are you? Get out of my room. I, for lack of a better phrase, the events that took place after this, I will spare you most of the details, but he beat the crap out of me. I tell you this story because I learned so much from it. It took me a while, but I look at it, I look at it as the most positive, you know, in the most positive way I can. One, I learned to fight back. I fought for my life. And I lived because of it, and a lot worse didn't happen because of it. So fight back. If you're ever in a situation like that, I think the statistic is a third of the women in this room have had a similar or relatable experience. Fight back. Don't freeze up. Women often get, let fear get the best of them. And just fight back. It could save your life. Also, trust your gut. I opened my eyes, and I knew something was wrong. If you feel like it's a good idea, do it. If you feel like it's a bad idea, don't do it. And women have this incredible intuition, so listen to it. And the third thing that I learned is that we are so strong. I had a voice come out of me that I had never heard before. It was so loud and so powerful, and I honestly didn't know where it came from. I had physical strength that I had never experienced before. I had muscles in my body I didn't even know were there. I had this like spidey sense and I could see a, a blueprint of my escape route in a millisecond of the events or the beginning of the event. We are so, so strong. It's incredible. And I, I didn't realize that until I had that experience. So I'm telling you now. That was a story of physical strength. Now, every weekend when I was little, my dad walked my brothers and I down to the comic book store. I was raised on comic books, not fairy tales. I don't really relate to Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty, but I could tell you anything you need to know about Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, the Hulk, I could go on. I had the entire Marvel Masterpiece collection, including holograms. If you don't know what that is, it's awesome. But you know, I always wanted superpowers like, you know, Batman and Superman and Spider-Man. And um, there weren't a lot of women that I could turn to in these comic books. I read a ton of Betty and Veronica. In fact, I named my dog Archie, if we have any Archie comic fans here. And, you know, I read a lot of Batman, actually. I liked Catwoman, but she didn't seem like someone I could be friends with. There was a lot of, like, hiss, hissing going on. I just wasn't really into it. So I know you know what I'm going to say, which is, I read a whole lot of Wonder Woman. And when I was little, and I would you know, be afraid in my room and think there were monsters under my bed, I would think, where is my inner Wonder Woman? And I would just you know, identify with her. And still to this day, you know, some people turn to their family, some people turn to their friends, some people turn to their religion. I turn to Wonder Woman. I think, where is my inner Wonder Woman? When I'm walking down the street and I'm afraid like Catwoman's behind me or something, I think, where is my inner Wonder Woman? And I cross the street because Wonder Woman is with me. Before this speech, I consulted my inner Wonder Woman. <laughs> when I sit in the boardroom and I'm negotiating a deal um, and I'm intimidated by the people in the room and scared to sort of state my opinion, I think, where is my inner Wonder Woman? So I am asking you to find your inner Wonder Woman. Maybe it's Wonder Woman, maybe it's somebody else, maybe it's something else, but find your inner Wonder Woman. 
The thing that's so great about Wonder Woman is she has these three strengths. She has the strength of conviction. She has physical strength. But the thing that differentiates her from all of the male superheroes is her emotional strength. And so she has those three strengths. I believe every woman in this room and every woman out there has the strength of conviction, physical, and emotional strength. And with those three strengths, you can do anything. So be strong. Thank you.